In, uh, Las Vegas for IBM Pulse. This is SiliconANGLE and the Cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. And we go out to the events, extract the soothing from the noise, and uh, we're here at the IBM Pulse cloud event. Mike Gilfix, the director of mobile and analytics out of Austin. Mobile first is the segment. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much. So one of the things at the Cube we talk about from the beginning, going back three, four years ago when we started this, was how the data is changing the game. Big data convergent infrastructure, that obviously was cloud mobile and social. We were the first ones really to start talking about that, but now it's in full build-out mode. People, you've seen the success of WhatsApp out there. People Absolutely. like, what, $19 billion? It's a it's great a, story. It's a mobile app, right? Um, now it's transforming the telecom industry, um, so it's probably going to be significantly more than that, but mobile is not one of those things where, oh, I have a web, web app, I just want to port it to mobile. It's a little bit different. So I want to ask you first, what is your take on the mobile development market? And, and what does mobile first mean? Well, so, so mobile is different, absolutely, than the web. And actually, you know, what you find when you look at the way that people are building these applications, the way they're going about it, they're really creating different experiences. And thinking through that experience and how it's different from the web is it's a different skill set. It's a different thing for the user. The user wants this amazing integrated device experience. It's on the go, might be location enabled, might be using the camera, all these different facets of the physical device experience that can be integrated into your application. And that's a different skill set. So design is absolutely paramount. And making sure that your teams, for example, that might be building those experiences are ready for that. So that, that's tough. Can you drill down on a little bit? Because uh, people, sure. I want to just unpack that because that's really kind of an important point. We're, we're finding the same thing, mm -hmm. is that mobile is a completely different thinking around the development process, not just yeah. bolting it onto a pre-existing legacy app or web app. So what, what have you seen the best case, use cases that you've seen, success stories, and failures around people who have tried to go mobile first or try to bolt on a web app? What have been some of the anecdotal things you can share with the audience? Well, one of the worst possible things you can do is take your exactly existing website, try to make a little bit of mobile markup, and then throw it on the device in the browser, and then suddenly you find that your users are pinching and zooming at an alarming rate. That just simply does not work, it does not scale, and your users actually run out of patience. So no one wants to use that. Um, the people that are most successful are actually rethinking the processes. They're rethinking the relationship with that customer. They're rethinking the fact that, hey, I carry this thing around with me all the time. The data is easily accessible. I have context I could have never had before, and what if I could integrate that into the design? And it's really driving towards sort of this fit for purpose contextual kind of computing model where you know the, the context of me using my phone is different than the context of my tablet. Might be that you know they're using mobile on a set-top box or an in-car dashboard. All these different new contexts where mobile is now creeping up as the preferred platform for these computing, and these users are really you know finding that there's a there's a different way that they want to consume that content. What about the enterprise market? I mean, mobile mm -hmm. has been obviously a big emphasis on top line growth. You've seen the consumerization of IT, yeah. bring your own device to work. So we're just starting to see some build out. On the consumer side, it's all the rage, right? You know, mobile first. Absolutely. Uh, it's pretty much the, the mantra for the developer community. What about the enterprise? Well, it's now actually becoming, and the ramp is amazing, the, it is becoming the mantra for the enterprise. And the reason is because you've got unprecedented access. They can now give to all their employees this unprecedented access to information, instant interaction, their business processes, instant collaboration in ways they could have never done before. And there's this next generation of employee who demands this at work. They've had the convenience of their personal life and they want to bring that into their work environment and have that same level of convenience. So tons of drive towards doing that. There's other challenges, by the way. If you're going to go and provide this unprecedented access, the, the problem you've got is how do you protect your data? How do you ensure you're still compliant with your corporate policies? So unprecedented access, but new pitfalls that actually have to be mastered in order for the enterprise to, to go down that path. So, so Mike, I, I, thought, I thought, John, if I may, um, at the keynote this morning, uh, Brian Dressler of, of uh, Continental, yep. talking about you know the, the automated car, fully automated car, and you know, referenced the Internet of Things. How does the Internet of Things, however you define it, smarter planet, et cetera, how does it affect this whole discussion? Is it a 
Is it an evolution of mobile first? Is it a completely new vector and a you know com com mindset change? What are you well, yeah. So I, I mean, we're entering this era of hyper connectivity. There's such an opportunity now to interconnect so many different facets of how we want to interact with our, let's call it our digital experience. And it could be that you're using a smartphone that's rich, could be you're seeing from your TV. Wait, all these now new devices have their facet of your digital experience. If we can interconnect all these things, there's new level of convenience, new level of ways in which users can get you know, personalized function from all their different things in their lives. By the way, what's really interesting, you see as an extension is a lot of these Internet of Things scenarios are actually exploiting your mobile device as a universal controller. So almost all the interesting Internet of Things scenarios ultimately have you building kind of the management app that sits on the device that's allowing you to communicate with your fridge or turn on the air conditioner before you come home or remotely start your car. In fact, many of the car scenarios are looking at the rate and pace of consumer devices like phones and how can they offload some of that experience onto the phone to make it easier to interact with their car. Fascinating time. So how far away are we from that sort of vision you just laid out? You're gonna... uh, I think you're going to start to see a lot of that stuff coming to market in the next year or two. Absolutely. I mean, already it's happening. Already and, some and, of the first experiences. And what are the, what are the, the, the enablers there? And, and what are the headwinds? You know, Because, so, I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 sometimes I go to watch a movie with my kids and and my, my smart TV says, well, you got to go to your laptop and you have to you know, log in. You really can't do it on your mobile. So it's, yeah. there's, there's still some development headwinds going on there. But, yeah. but you're saying within the next couple of years, those are going to dissipate. Well, What's the enabler? There? Well, these are ecosystems that have never been connected before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges is how do you bring these different ecosystems that were sort of operating in their own siloed value chain and then interconnect them in a way that makes sense and then provide a consistent experience to the consumer. That, that takes a while. So that's, that's going to be the evolution that needs to occur. I think for consumers, they want that convenience. They're ready. But today, they can't make them talk to all those different devices. Plus, you have these new class of devices with intelligence in them that are only now rolling out to consumers. So that, too, is going to take a little bit as well. Talk about the keynote you have today. you got a mobile sure. keynote. Talk about what you're going to talk about. And then I'd like to, you to drill down on how, does, how do you get these developers uh, in the enterprise and also potentially on the consumer side with soft layer uh, infrastructure building Absolutely. great mobile first apps? Because you have web yeah. you guys have been around the block for a while. You're not new to the party per se. Sure. But there is a new cobbling together of stuff. So talk about your keynote and then the new capabilities. Yeah, so a little bit on mobile first. So mobile first for us is a collection of technologies and services uh, that we can offer to our customers who are looking to orient their infrastructure towards this new channel. It's also a lifestyle, though. So we're helping our customers understand how they can think differently about those business processes, about their end customer interactions, about the way their employees work, the way they interact with partners in an integrated way. Um, in, in the keynote today, we're actually going to talk about, from a mobile standpoint, we're going to look at the, the base four facets that we see our different clients looking at as they adopt mobile technology, whether it's process transformation or looking at their digital brand and how they engage with their end customers, how they ultimately build applications and deliver them, and how they optimize their infrastructure for this new channel. So we're going to look at those four different facets, talk about some of the tools that people have in their toolbox to do it. And the exciting new announcement that you know, we, we previewed this morning, and we're going to talk a bit more about that as well, is how they can now leverage our cloud offerings to accelerate. And the pressure in mobile these days is all about speed. Speed to market, speed to continuously deliver new innovation, all while doing that securely and tapping into the existing assets that the enterprise have built up for a long period of time and bringing that to the mobile channel. What acceleration specifically are you guys looking at that's holding them back? Well, one of the key things is, how do I integrate my enterprise? If they can use pre-integrated cloud technologies that can already tap into their legacy and bring that out to the mobile channel, huge time to value. The other thing is, built into our technology is effectively a life cycle. It's continuous delivery. So you can bring new innovations to market incredibly quickly. So I noticed in your background on LinkedIn, you have a, a distributed computing background, master's in computer science. Oh, yes, went, I did that for a bit. <laughs> and, went, and went to Tufts, which is, which is the art from our stomping ground. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, but talk about the cloud in terms of DevOps. The DevOps movement we've been covering for mm -hmm. years here on SiliconANGLE. And you know, in the old days, <laughs> a couple of years ago, people would eat glass, spit nails, as being Dave say. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a new breed of developers. Sure. But going mainstream, not everyone wants to do ops. So yeah. they just want to, they want an Amazon-like experience. Um, that has created some good things for speed, but also sure. legacy scale issues. So how do I get speed for DevOps? So I'm, I'm a developer, I don't want to deal with ops at all. And two, how do I get scale and reliability? So, you know, I, I remember building lots of systems where when we built the system, we spent a lot of time talking about things like, how did you cut over to the next version? How did you set up all these parallel environments and how did you roll out your updates? Tremendous complexity in solving that problem. 
What cloud technologies allow you to do is they integrate infrastructure into the deployment mechanics, the versioning, and the development process, and really tightly link that stuff together. And the idea being that as a developer, I can focus on my code change, and I can use the base infrastructure to help me do this continuous delivery, to manage my environments, and to move things between environments in a consistent way. That's very powerful for the developer. So they don't have to think about physical topologies, they don't have to think about the cutover, they don't have to think about all this networking stuff that ultimately results in routing. Tremendous simplicity to do that, and that's a very powerful so we Concept, so right. just to, just to summarize that, yeah. basically, the versioning control, the development life cycle, and the actual tactics is essentially what we call integrated stack and infrastructure scale. So if I yeah. push new code, say I'm updating mm -hmm. a Node.js piece of code, sure, that should trickle and automatically update yeah. other stacks or uh, other code. Bases. Absolutely. Yeah, and it should be linked into your application. It should run in your infrastructure. It should scale it as need to and cut over for your application. Versus, versus calling the guy who wrote the code for the other piece, making sure he's got the patch loaded. All of this is like the complicated under the hood stuff, right? Or, or my favorite, you know, you, your app doesn't work in your test environment. It's because someone's screwed up the script and you have no clue why. Seems to work in production. How do I reconcile my environments and spend more time debugging your own environments instead of actually making sure that your value-added business function works? Dave, this is it, what we. That's why that's why Amazon's kicking ass, and that's one of the things that really works well with Elastic Beanstalk auto scaling. These are things that developers want. Well, and, and, and I wanted to ask about the security model as well. How yep. does the cloud affect that security model in, in the intersection of mobile? So, um, well, mobile, every mobile application has a client component and a server component. So a lot of the focus you see in mobile today is figuring out how we protect data from the client in because there's tons of new threats that go above and beyond server infrastructure for mobile. And um, actually, many of the things we'll talk about in our mobile first keynote are some of the security technologies to help with that. Now, cloud, of course, does introduce additional uh, security challenges as well. How do you securely connect to this sensitive enterprise data, bring that to a scalable compute environment, but you know, retain control? Um, we actually have a lot of experience in integrating technology and integrating with single sign-on infrastructure. So there's a lot we can bring there to an enterprise. And frankly, there's more to come as we and the industry actually figures out what the best model is for these enterprises. You know, it's interesting to me, Michael. You, you hear so many enterprises talk about their concerns about the cloud mm -hmm. generally, and specifically public cloud as it relates to security in particular. Yep. You don't hear those same concerns, at least not in, in as vocal a sense, about yep. mobile. Everybody wants to have a, a you know an app store for their enterprise, or everybody's sure. going to you know mobilize their workforce. Why do you think that is? It, it, I mean, is mobile inherently more secure? I don't, I don't well, think so. You're relying on the cloud in a big way. Right? Every enterprise conversation I have, security is one of the top things in every conversation you have about mobile. So I, I wouldn't say that that's the case. What I will say is that security is a trade-off. It is always a trade-off between protecting your data and, the value. and <laughs> the value you're getting, the speed that you're getting. So, so is that what it is? You know, people just, just overlook it because the value is so enormous, it's such a competitive uh, I, I think uh, that imperative? you know there's tremendous pressure to get to market today. Also, those applications are becoming more sophisticated. So as more transaction-based stuff starts occurring over that channel, the need for security is more. So you know, lots of enterprises are looking to get that, and then they're going to sort of scale it as they become more sophisticated. So does well. the cloud enable a better security model because you can potentially, you know, port patches across a, a wider base and scale that, or does it create more threats because the yeah. The bad stuff can certainly propagate certainly building security into your applications is hard. If you could use an environment where security was integrated into that, and you didn't have to think about it, it's less error prone. You can trust the experts that build it into it. That has tremendous value to the enterprise. I always ask, you know, people in the business, is it's, is security a do over as a result of these mega trends? It, it, it can't be. You, you, <laughs> you need it. Mike, I want to ask you. Sure. Take your IBM hat off for a second. We'll, we'll leave half your hat on. Just turn it sideways. Just half IBM. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of hats you're, myself. You're, so. you're a developer, <laughs> and you've got to build the, the mobile app. Yeah. Just, just take the CrowdChat examples. We have CrowdChat.net slash IBM Pulse. It's a web app. We have a mobile. Pretend yep. you're working with us, and you're saying, okay, we're going to build this mobile app from scratch. What do we do? What, 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 what do we do? A complete blank sheet of paper. Yeah. Take me through the, the, the steps of how do I attack that? Who do I call? How do I think? Sure. Well, you know, if I was if I was building a born on the web kind of platform, I would look to these scalable cloud technologies, go and sign up with one of them and try them, much like the announce you saw today that we did with Bluemix, because the opportunity there is to take one of these pre-integrated environments. I have my code that just scales for me. By the way, I don't know how popular my service is going to be. I don't know what my spike of usage is going to be. I can offload all that and I can pay for what I need. So that's a great opportunity to get started quickly. 
integrate those services and go and build it. I think those are the kinds of technologies that those new applications are going to look at today. What kind of software packages should I use on the IBM uh, portfolio? Well, what are you skilled in? See, that's <laughs> the beauty of it. You can pick the language that your developers have skill in. Is it Java? Do you want to do JavaScript programming? Do you want to write in Ruby? No problem. So the flexibility there is to tap into your skill set and ultimately where you can find talented engineers in your area that feel comfortable with what you're building. Okay, a final word. Tell the folks out there sure. what is the roadmap for mobile first, why is it important, and where is it going? Sure, so we're really focused on three things. We want to give everyone the, the breadth of the portfolio to operate their complete digital platform. We're going to help them create an infrastructure that's optimized for mobile that's the most secure. We want to give them the complete life cycle for their applications such they can continuously deliver and get to market fastest with our stuff while still tapping their existing uh, enterprise legacy. And then we want to give them the tools to create a differentiated brand experience and ultimately really understand how they're interacting with their consumers, take advantage of this new forms of data and make that experience better. Mike, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Also, you, uh, IBM has a developer event called Dev at Pulse, which Absolutely. is going on separately. Um, it's a great place, Dev, if you haven't checked it out. Dev it's a great experience. We're going to try to get over there tonight if we can. Mm -hmm. i got to figure out who to call to get in there, but I think Colleen will hook me up, I think. She's out there, but big developer party here going on. Yep. You guys are attracting new developers. Absolutely. 70% um, of the attendees are first timers here. Mm -hmm. uh, great show. Uh, we'll be right back. This is theCUBE, talking mobile with IBM here at IBM Pulse. We'll be right back after this short break.